So now you've collected your data, what are you actually going to do with your data? Well, you need to analyze it and you actually need to draw conclusions from it. So after you've actually drawn a graph, uh, if your data allows you to draw a graph, if it didn't, then you might not be able to do much in terms of analyzing the data, especially if the data is qualitative. But uh, once the data has been collected in the chart, uh, try to work out what the graph actually tells you. And then you're going to write a conclusion, more about the conclusion in a little bit. Uh, but basically, in your conclusion, you're going to compare what you found with your actual prediction. So when analyzing the data, we talked about already using a good chart and you're going to try to try to uh, find out what the pattern is and you can see how your independent variable affects your dependent variable. Remember the independent variable goes along the x-axis usually and the dependent variable is going to go along the y-axis. You want to try to use your scientific knowledge to help you spot the patterns and try to explain the patterns as well too. And that'll help you with deciding how you should connect up your lines. Um, for the most part, a lot of people like to take these dots and connect them like a connect the dots game like this one goes to here and then so it goes boom 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 but sometimes you have to ask yourself is it appropriate to draw a line of best fit so that really depends on using your scientific knowledge and your background of what you're actually investigating is it supposed to be a straight line do you think there's enough evidence to make you think it's supposed to be a straight line or are these tiny differences here because of the actual data. Is there a real reason for that? Uh, if not, then maybe a straight line, a line of best fit is the best way to plot it. And if that's the case, then you want to try to use a ruler to go through the data and try to hit as many points as possible, but have an equal number of points that go above and below uh, the line. So mm, I've kind of got, you know, I'm going through a few of them and there's two points above, there's two points below. When you're doing this by hand, it's quite difficult to do it, but it is a good way to practice. If you're using software, uh, the software can help create a line for you and mathematically calculate the best line that can go through. But it's always a good idea to go back and think with your scientific background and ask yourself, what's the best way to do this? Should I be connecting the lines, connecting the dots with straight lines in between, like a connect the dot game? Or should I be drawing what's called a line of best fit to represent the data? And it really depends upon the independent variable and the dependent variable for your experiment. So the point is you need to think about it. If there are outliers, make a decision on whether to ignore them or not. So if there's a dot like hovering way up here, does that mean I should draw the line going straight up through like this. In that case, you might think to yourself, well, it doesn't really fit. The only reason I'm doing that is because there's a big outlier out here. So the question you should ask is, do I need to include that outlier in the data? And again, it goes back to using your scientific knowledge and background or researching, uh, looking at other people who've done similar experiments and see if they also have uh, weird data and whether they're including it or not. And if that is just maybe an error that has popped up because you didn't have time to repeat your result. So that's something you need to think about as well too. So when writing a conclusion, a conclusion states basically what you found out uh, as a result of doing your experiment and collecting your data. Start by saying what the investigation shows, then describe any relationship you can see between the two variables. So if you see a graph that looks like the data overall is increasing, then maybe you can describe that relationship as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable is also increasing and use your graph to help support your conclusion when you're doing that. So you can't really draw a conclusion until you've drawn out a graph to look for those patterns. Saying what your results show is only part of analyzing the results. You also need to, again, use your scientific knowledge to explain the pattern. Uh, you should already, if you're worried that you don't have enough scientific knowledge. Well, you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to plan an investigation to begin with. So go back to what you wrote in your in your introduction, in your prediction, in your plan, in your hypothesis, and uh, read what you wrote. And then go back and see if you can analyze it and see if your results are actually um, agreeing with your prediction or if it's going against your prediction or if there's if the data is just all over the place you can't see a clear pattern perhaps uh, your experiment 
wasn't able to answer the question. And that's fine as well too. But the key is to think about why why you weren't able to answer your question. Maybe the plan wasn't very clear. We'll talk about that in the next video when we talk about evaluating your experiment. And that's a huge part of uh, carrying out an investigation and looking back to see if your results are valid. And so after explaining with your explaining the patterns with your scientific knowledge, uh, compare your results with your prediction. And we talked about that as well, too. So analyzing your data and writing a conclusion uh, using the data and the pattern that you figured out that you've uh, that you've analyzed and, and looked at is going to be a important step.